Hi everyone and welcome to Creative Chelsea. Today I'm excited to share with you my first alternative card using the May 2023 Paper Pumpkin Kit called Exploring in Color. This fun outdoor themed kit creates nine handmade cards, three in three different designs. These are the intended cards you can make with the kit. If you would like to watch me unbox the kit and create these cards, you can click on the playlist and I will link it up here in the top right corner. Each month I take the contents from the paper pumpkin kits and make alternative projects. Today I'm sharing with you these two cards. The first we will create together has a simple layout and uses only an extra card base, while the second card is a stepped up version with more layers, distressing technique, splattering, and clear embossing on the stamps to give these elements a shine. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel using the link in the bottom right corner so that you can get updates when I post a new video. I would love to be your Stampin' Up! demonstrator. If you're interested in getting your own paper pumpkin subscription, please use the link in the description below to subscribe. To begin either of these cards, I've taken one of the card bases and I'm actually going to use the back of the card base and I will save the front for a future alternative. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it at, in half at four and a quarter inches. And then I'm going to rotate this and I'm going to cut off one inch from the top. This piece I'm going to cut into two pieces that are a half inch wide strips. Okay, so we have two sky pieces. We're going to use these sky pieces here on the left side of our main image. So this piece that I have is four and a half inches tall and we're going to just cut it right in half at two and one eighth inches. And this is the size that we're going to use for that main background image on our cards. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this banner from the kit. This one is the one with the fishtail and we're going to just cut it in half. So line it up with your paper trimmer so that the middle is lined up with the um, cut line and then just go ahead and cut it. Okay, so now we've cut everything that we need for our cards. So for our next step, we're going to stamp our images. Let me show you the images that we're going to be using. I've got the mug, the compass, and the boot, and I am using the in colors that coordinate. So for the pebbled path ink, I'm going to use the boot with that ink color. And then I have the boho blue, and I'm going to stamp my compass in boho blue. And then I have Moody Mauve, and I'm going to do the mug. And if you don't have these colors, you can use any colors that you have that might look good with this um, card. So if you've got some greens or yellows, browns, those would all look really good as well. Next, I'm going to stamp my greeting in the copper clay stampin' spot that came in the kit. I want to use the Cheers to Another Adventure stamp. So from here, we're going to go ahead and fussy cut out those stamped images, and I'm going to trim around my greeting. I'm going to use my paper trimmer to trim around my greeting, and I have a little tip here to share with you. So I have a sticky note and this is the sticky side here on the left and I'm going to line it up right along this cut line. There's a little bit of a gray border and I'm going to line it up right with that outside edge of the gray border on my Stampin' Up! paper trimmer. If I want a wider border around my greeting then I would go bigger. So this is the sticky side here on the left. And what you do is you take your greeting and you line it 
line it up with the sticky note. So I'm going to line up the top of my H on both of those words so that I barely see just the tip of that H poking through. And then I can trim. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me a nice even border along the edge of my greeting. So I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So just want to see a little bit of the bottom of that greeting poking out. And then hold everything in place while you cut. You don't want it to slip. So you see how that just cuts really nicely along the edge. And then you can just eyeball where you want to trim off the sides. I'm going with about a fourth of an inch or so on those sides, making it a little bit longer. So we're going to first put together the basic card and then I'll show you some of the techniques that I did to step up the card into our wow card. So I'm going to take one of the sections from the, the larger sections from the card base that we cut and then one of the sky sections and we're going to lay them, um, layer them on top of each other. So to do this, I am going to use my grid paper so I've lined it up with one of the grid lines and it's going to, the finished size is about two and a half inches in width. So it's showing about three eighths of an inch of that blue strip. Then from there, I'm just going to take some dimensionals and pop them on so that it's connected to both pieces. Okay, if you want to have an extra one in the middle, you can just for support. And then of course I need to have some on the other side. So I'm going to use the edges, just like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and add that to my card base, which is a card base of crumb cake cardstock. And I want about a half inch or so of a border around that on the left side of that card base. Then I'll take my stamped images and I'm going to add dimensionals to these as well. And then maybe place a little bit of liquid glue on the back of one of the Moody Mauve strips that we cut. And just in the center since it will be coming off just slightly. So go ahead, you're gonna lay this down around this dark green area here. And then you will add your greeting on top. Place it so that the Moody Mob strip is about centered on the greeting. So you'll get something like this. And then if you want to show the buffalo, you can, or you can cover them up, which is what I did. I'm just going to take these stamped images and cover them up just a little bit. So then it will look something like this. Then you can take some of the linen thread that came in the kit. I have 10 inches and I'm just going to tie a little bow and then I will add it underneath my greeting. As just a, a quick little embellishment. You can take one of the glue dots that came in the kit and place it on the knot of your bow. Take off the paper backing, and then I'm just gonna slide that underneath with the adhesive up behind that greeting where I want it. And your simple card is all done. If you want, you can go ahead and do those exact same steps with the other pieces to get two of that card. However, if you would like to do the stepped up version, let's go ahead and talk about some of the fun elements that this card has. The first thing I want to do is to do my stamping. And I've added some clear embossing powder on my stamped images. And I've done this two ways. And so I'm gonna go ahead and share with you both ways that you can add clear embossing to your stamped images. 
So for the first three elements, I stamped them and I stamped them with the same colors that I did before. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this um, piece that I previously stamped. The next step is to take Versamark ink and you are going to cover those images with Versamark ink. And this is going to apply this sticky ink over the entire image, making it easy for the clear embossing powder to um, adhere to it. So I've got my tray and some clear embossing powder from Stampin' Up! And I'm just going to go ahead and sprinkle that over the entire image. And then shake off the excess. Make sure it covers the whole thing. So you can see that it's got the powder over the entire image. So I decided to go ahead and do this on camera because I realized I've never done clear embossing on my channel before and you do need to see how it changes so that you know that you have um, melted it completely. So as you're watching this, you'll see that it goes from a muted color that's grainy to a smooth surface that's nice and shiny. So I really love this particular technique of adding clear embossing powder because you're going to get a completely shiny image as well as it doesn't require you to be quick. You can stamp your images, let them dry, add the Versamark, you can take your time with it. It's just a really fun look. However, the second uh, technique I'm going to share with you on how to add clear embossing does require you to work quickly. So you need to have everything um, close by. So I'm going to have my tray. I've got my clear embossing powder. I want my greeting and I'm going to use this um, copper clay just like before. So I'm going to show, I'm going to talk to you about the steps and then I'm going to show you so that way I can be quick. So you first stamp your image onto your cardstock and then you're going to move it quickly into the powder. And what we want is we want the wet ink to hold on to the clear powder. And that is why we need to move quickly because this particular ink does dry fast. So good, put a good amount of ink over your stamped image. Go ahead and stamp it and then move it right into your clear embossing tray and apply it. And you can see that you do have it where you want it because it has that grainy muted look to it. So now we're going to go ahead and heat this up. So this particular technique gives us the embossing right where we're stamped. So we don't have an embossed look on the entire piece. We just get that nice shine on the text. If you decided to do this technique with the other images, such as like the compass, then you would get the shine on just the areas where the ink is, okay? Instead of the entire um, element like I do here. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to fussy cut and trim these down for our card. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to take this piece of copper clay cardstock. It is three inches wide by five and a half inches tall. And we're going to distress it and then we'll add it to our card and add this splattering around it that also adds that nice distressed look. So to distress cardstock, what I like to do is use a bone folder and I'm just going to go all the way around it and bend it. And I'm going to do it on one side and then you can see how it's curling this way. And then I'm going to go on the other side and you just go back and forth. This is going to give it a very um, suede, kind of looks like suede to me, like a leathery look because the fibers in the paper start to separate and you can start to see them coming through. So it gives you like a little bit of a texture to that card. And if by chance you get any tears or um, folds, that's okay too. So you just go back and forth 
on both sides until it's distressed enough or like at least the way you like it. So I like to wait. I like to start to see the two sides of the paper begin to separate. That's kind of where I want the um, distressing, how distressed I want it to be. So you can start to see that they come, um, start to come apart. It just gets softer as well, which is kind of nice. Then along the edges, I take the side of my bone folder and I just rub and press. And that just really adds, makes the edges nicely distressed. You can also do this with the edge of your paper snips if you want. That kind of tears up the paper a little bit more if you want it to be and it gives it a different look. This kind of just presses the paper. Okay, so then we get this really nice distressed piece of cardstock that we're going to add to our card base. Okay, so we can start to adhere some of these things. I'm going to take this paper and just separate it a little bit at the top and roll it just slightly to give it that nice look. Maybe I'm going to do that. There we go. So separate it and then kind of roll and fold those two pieces. Kind of do the same over here. Okay, we'll do a little bit down at the bottom too, just to give it that look. Okay, so then on the back, I'm gonna add a little bit of adhesive. I'm just gonna do a liquid, and I'm gonna add it to my card base at just a very slight angle, okay? And then any parts that are poking up, I can just roll up a little bit more so that they fit on the card. So just a slight angle, doesn't need to be great. Then I'm going to go ahead and add my background piece at a little bit stronger angle, just to kind of add to that distressed look. From here, I'm going to do some splattering. So I know I've done some splattering on my channel before, but I just wanted to share with you again how I do it. So I'm going to take one of the Stampin' Write markers. This one is the Pebbled Path. So this is the one that coordinates with the colors in the kit, but you could use black or brown or whatever you have. Then you take the lid, you place the um, wider tip, the brush tip inside the lid, and you flick it out at, with a strong motion. And you get this beautiful, splatter effect for your cards. It's great for these outdoor themed cards. And you can go as heavy or light as you want. I did them in the top left and bottom right corner and then just a little bit throughout the card. Then we're just gonna put this card together just like we did with the first one. Add a little adhesive to that moody mauve strip. Place it around that dark green area. You can place it at an angle if you want or straight, either one. And then you're gonna place your greeting. Place it so that it's about center on that strip. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. And then we're going to add our elements to cover up that buffalo. So you'll get something like this. And then last, we'll add our bow with a little bit of glue dots to that bottom right corner. And your card is all done. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing how I created a simple and a stepped up version using the May 2023 Paper Pumpkin Kit. If you are interested in getting written instructions for this alternative or seeing close-up images, you can visit my blog, creativechelsea.com. Thanks so much for watching. Have a creative day. Bye.